Hey everyone, welcome in. Today we've got an exciting video where I teach you how to essentially in paint in videos. This is something that's been a long time coming. We've had it for images, you know, almost since the start, but for videos, this has been uh, difficult with trying to use video to video and, and things like that. And we finally have something that works pretty well. So I wanna walk you through how to do it today. We're gonna to be using a custom node called Flow Edit. And what it does is it allows you to kind of target what in the source video you want to change in the output video. But with Juan and now having image to video, there's a twist. We can put an actual starting frame in that we want it to start with and it helps guide the loom flow edit even better okay so head over to the patreon link in the description and grab this first file one native flow edit image to video and drag that into your environment okay so first thing we'll need to do is set up our models i have it's gonna default to all of my paths. Essentially just choose whichever T5 XXL works for you. You may, if you're running on a smaller machine, you might have to use the FP8. Uh, I'm gonna use the FP16 here. Next for your video encoder, you need the Clip Vision H that comes in the comfy org one hugging face and make sure you change it in both of these and then finally we need our diffusion model. So make sure you're using an image to video diffusion model. I'm gonna use FP8, uh, I can't fit the BF16 in, and I'm using a 5090. So if you need to, there's also quantized models out there. Um, you can just plug them into the GGUF node here and then you just need to change the get models here to the GGUF model instead of model. So you just click the drop down, and then Click GGuff model. Okay, so once you have all that set up, that's a one-time setup, you can save the workflow and and that part is good. So now down here is where we're loading our source video and our target image. All right, so I have this video of this woman walking down a path that I'm gonna use and I'm forcing the frame rate to 16 because that's what Juan uses. And then I have this image of her wearing these maroon sweatpants, but I'm actually gonna change, I'm actually gonna use a different image. I'm gonna show you real quick. We have these image in painting. I, I included these image in painting workflows. So just grab one of those, either either one. The ref one takes a reference image and then the regular in paint one, just there's no reference image, you just mask it and so you tell Lux what you wanna see. Okay, so for, this I am going to I'm going to impaint these or these crazy funky orange <laughs> orange pants from this jumpsuit onto her just to show you like you know something kind of outlandish works. Um, I find that if something kind of outlandish works, then you can probably get something that makes more sense to work. Um, so, but the problem is we need our first frame of the video. So I also included a workflow called video get frame n. So really simple workflow. Literally all it does is it gets the first frame of the video. So I'm gonna run it and we have the first frame of the video. I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna go back here and drag this in. I have a whole video on swapping styles and, and outfits using this workflow. So if you wanna know more about this work, workflow, head over there. I'm just gonna really quickly do it. So um, I wanna mask out the pants. And then, the, so the top here masks, creates a mask and then these bottom two prompts subtract from that mask. So if I did person and then I subtract subtracted the shirt and face and hair, then I would be only left with the jeans theoretically. But I'm not gonna treat it like that. I'm just gonna mask the pants and then give it to nonsense. You know, it's gonna subtract ear and hair, but those wouldn't have been in the mask already anyways. All right, so this should leave us with this woman walking with these bright orange pants on. So I had a little glitch here where when I said I wanted to mask the an, an ear, it masks the entire person. So it just subtracted out everything and I was left with a blank mask. So now I have the mask I want. 
So this is going to be our target image. Just a pretty simple pants swap. So let's head back to our workflow and let's drag in those pants. Okay, so the last thing you can change down here, I'm gonna run this at 720 by 480 because this is the 480p model. And I think that that gives me the best outcome. You can see I'm running the 480 model. Okay, so one last thing before we run it. We, I left a link to Quen Hugging Face Space on my Patreon. So this is going to auto caption our video for us. So all you need to do is upload the video here. Okay, and then we just need to ask it, um, give me a just detailed description of this video and submit. Okay, copy that description, head back to Comfy UI. And then, so we have two prompts here. We have the source conditioning and the target conditioning. Source is where the original video description goes. So you can see we put in the original video. And then I usually knock it down to one paragraph. I feel like Juan reads single paragraphs better than having line breaks. And then copy that same prompt into your target prompt. And then the only thing we're changing is the fact that she's now wearing orange pants instead of jeans. So go to your target prompt and find where it says that she's wearing jeans. So the woman is dressed casually in a fitted olive green top with long sleeves and high-waisted blue jeans. So we want to say high-waisted bright orange pants and that looks like the only place where it mentions her jeans all right so from there we can run this now and see what our output is one more note this works best at 81 frames so you can try other frame counts but definitely works best at 81 or more frames and you can do a sanity check before the generation starts this first frame compare just make sure that you you're definitely comparing the first frame uh, when you're doing your image to video and this does take a long time to run I, I'm I think this is going to take about 12 minutes to generate for me I haven't been able to get torch compile or sage attention working well for me yet on my 5090 so um, if you can enable these these should also gain you some speed and also the tcash updates for Juan should also help improve speed too. Okay, there's one other thing I wanna mention about this workflow. So I've played around with this a lot and I think the skip steps and drift steps are best at two and 15, but these are definitely values to play around with. I have a little description of what they, how they work and what they mean. All right, and there you go. Uh, the woman's now wearing these bright orange pants where she was wearing jeans before. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with this work workflow. It's honestly pretty incredible technology. Uh, I didn't think that this would be around for, you know, six months to a year. And here we have it right at the beginning of 2025. Um, and I can even see there's a lot of utility for this as well. It's not just like a cool thing to play around with. You know, if you have, if you see something, if you, if you have something in a video that you want to get rid of, this is a really easy way to do it. You know, if you, if there was like uh, another person in the background here or something, you could just impaint them out. And now you have a new video with, without that person in the background.